All right, right, man. Yeah, let's get this party started, man. It's episode 38 of Dreadful Talk. And this man joining me is Kyle Bryant. Um, he has the YouTube. What's going on? Yeah, yeah. He has the YouTube channel Daily Skate Undertake. And I, man, it's cool to be talking with you, man. Because I've been I've been a fan of your channel like before I even thought to you know even have you on as a guest and anything. And I've always you know supported what you've been doing. And man, I mean, I saw Skate and I saw Oklahoma, and I was like, man, this is something I can support and get behind. But um. But yeah, you know, go ahead and introduce yourself, you know, introduce your channel and just I'm, I'm really glad to have you join me, brother. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, again, I didn't expect it to be much of anything, but uh, yeah, my name is Kyle. I'm 31. I learned uh, how to skate last September with my son, about six month ish. And uh, we ended up, I don't know, falling in love with it. It's, it's our thing now. And it, it brought me and him closer and it's all I could pretty much think about now. <laughs> yeah, man. Uh, I started the skate channel mainly just to bring a little more realism to people that skate because it's not it's not like you just pick up a board and you're the best or you pick up the board and you're the worst. You got to put in the work and then it shows that anyone, even an old man, can do anything or try to do anything. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, man, you, you just hit so many of like the things I wanted to talk about. So perfect intro on your end. Um, but the, the first thing, yeah, no, I'm, um, so I'm, I'm 26, but turned 27 this summer. And, um, you know, I took probably 15 years off from skating. I skated when I was a young kid and then I didn't skate for years and years. And, you know, I was bored sitting around the pandemic and picked up a skateboard. I feel like that's a common thing. A lot of it happened to a lot of people during the pandemic. But, um, but yeah, I feel like the, just people, people not being afraid to try something new um, at, 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 you know, an older age. Like, you know, you don't always have to have the same hobbies you had as a kid. Like, you can learn new things, try new things. And, and that's definitely been something really cool about the journey I've found. Oh yeah, we have plenty of time for that, right? <laughs> exactly, man. Exactly. And then, um, also, yeah, man. I think uh, what also does separate your channel from a lot of other channels, um, and is just talk about like relating on the human level. Um, the fact that you do have your son in a lot of your videos, and um, you know, kind of going through that process together, and each making progress together, and it. I mean, it's it, it's kind of cliche to say it's beautiful to watch, but it's beautiful to watch, man. I just it, uh, thank you, man. Yeah, I mean, um kind of like i said it's just it's just that kind of content that you can't fake and then um yeah like also like my whole what i love about the whole kind of skate youtube kind of genre in general as a whole is just the re relatability of it all like um when you're watching you know street league or you're watching these like professional edited video parts it, it's so entertaining to watch and visually appealing but there's no sense of like like, oh yeah, that's something I can I can do, or that's something I relate to. I mean, you enjoy it. Exactly. But yeah, what you do, man, like I said, it's so much more relatable. It really is. And it's, it makes for a great watch, in my opinion. Well, thank you, man. It's I, I know it's a little bit different and uh, sometimes even borderline cheesy because I don't really know how, I don't really know this culture too well. Like I said, I just got into it. Uh, most of the time I go to the skate parks, we, we don't really get talk to or hung out with the other the other kids that are up there and it's cool and all uh but as far as like what it does for me and my son it brought like a kind of a sense of a relationship that we couldn't have without it i, I came out of a very dark period and uh i just i needed something positive and this brought more than i ever expected i did. wasn't too wasn't too happy to be living for a long time Man, that, that that's that's beautiful to hear, and how and it's crazy. That's like, like in skateboarding, you kind of hear that a lot. Like you kind of hear like it, it, it brings joy to people in a way that other things often don't. Um, like I said, oh, yeah. it, even uh, it's kind of you know on a smaller scale than that, but just you know during this whole quarantine and weird coronavirus year and all that, it's you know it's pretty easy to get down or blah or stuck in a rut and. And skating has been there for me. Like, you know, like if it wasn't for skating, how many days of what I have not even gotten sunlight, I just would have been in my house, you know, and like, that's not good for you. So like I said, it's like, my goal isn't to set out to be the world's best skater. But like I said, yeah, if something can get me out of the house, get me some fresh air, get me sweating a little bit and like just 
the struggle of le learning something new and teaching yourself something new. It's just, it's, it's so rewarding in its own unique way, man. It is. And that's, I mean, that's the best part. Like everyone puts a type of materialistic perspective on it. And, and what people don't realize is that even if you just roll, if, if you're a newbie, right. And you just roll up to a little curb or you roll up to a two stair and you pop that Ollie and you land it. and better yet, someone is recording it and they're hyped up. Dude, it doesn't matter if you're Nija, it doesn't matter if you're anything. It's the feeling, the moment, uh, you can't fake that with anything else. Yeah. It's, I don't know, it, it, games don't do it. it it's authentic. Life doesn't do it, to be honest. Yeah, you, you can only get it from skating. Yeah, no, it, it is, it's so authentic, it's so pure. Um, and like, so like, I'm a former athlete, like I have my, my background is football. I, I played football most of my life and like into college and everything. And, um, and you know, it's football is one of those weird sports where like, once you're done, you're done. Like there's no like rec league, like 11 on 11 tackle football. Like, you know, if you're a basketball player, soccer player, you can find little outlets to kind of scratch that itch, but football, you're done, you're done. But like that competitor still in you. And like, I know skateboarding is not what most people consider as a competitive sport, but like I get competitive with myself. Like, you know, I get to challenge mm -hmm. myself and push my belt. So it, it does, it kind of has given me something to kind of channel that competitive energy into. And, and I think that's been a really good thing too. And, um, and yeah, man, that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. For sure, man. Like I said, man, part of the, one of the few things that, that obviously drew me to your channel initially was the fact that, you know, you're based out of Oklahoma, you're talking about Oklahoma skate parks and just, just, Oklahoma skate culture in general. And um, it's just cool. Like I said, that's resonates for me. I'm originally from Norman, Oklahoma. Um, and I, you know, I still have a lot of loved ones there. A lot of my viewers and subscribers are from Oklahoma. So, um, you know, awesome. yeah, yeah. I, I have mad love for the state of Oklahoma, but uh, you know, the, the skate culture of Oklahoma and just skate skating in Oklahoma, like, especially like I'm out here in the Bay area of California, like one of the skateboarding, like meccas. And it's like, that's awesome. Oh, it, it, man, I'm telling you, man, as a place to skateboard. Oh, yeah. And like, especially as a place to learn to skateboard, it's just been phenomenal. Uh, but like, uh, like, you know, to some people, outsiders, you know, they, you know, especially people out here, Californians can be, I love Californians, but mm -hmm. in, when it comes to skateboarding, there's like this kind of arrogance, kind of gatekeeping kind of, you know, it's like, oh, like, yeah, I don't know, like California skating is different. It is different, but I don't know. I just, um, Talk about, you know, what it's like skating in a, skating in a state like Oklahoma where it's kind of not as common or, like, as ingrained in the culture as it is, like, you know, if you're in Santa Cruz or San Francisco, like, I mean, you walk the street for five, ten minutes, like, not only are you going to see somebody skating, like, you'll probably see somebody filming or, like, actually getting a session. And, um, as opposed to, you know, I, I said I, I live most of my life in Oklahoma, and, I mean, it's, 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 you know, a little more rare to see just people skating around. Yeah, you don't see it as much. I mean, definitely public skating's better because you have a lot more time between the police coming. <laughs> Oklahoma police, they don't have no time or no security, so they basically give you a little bit more leeway whenever you're skating, several more warnings and whatnot. Okay. Um, the parks are good. I mean, I don't know how long it's been since you've been here. It's but, been uh, about five years, four to five years. Okay, then you've missed a really good park they built in Norman. Yeah. It's, dude, it's superb. You can't beat that one. It's just so hard to get out to for me. Um, trying to think my second best is probably stars and stripes. Have you been to that one? No, no, no. Where's that at? That was a good one. Um, kind of over by Lake Overholzer. The birdhouse team actually opened that park. Oh, up. wow. It was cool. Okay. Yeah. And then where are you based out of? Um, what part of Oklahoma are you located in? I live over in Mustang. Oh, in Mustang. Okay, yeah. So that, yeah, it's that, south of like Yukon, if you're used to that area. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. So, um, so you have you pre you have pretty much have access to like the Oklahoma City skate parks. You know, the, those those probably aren't too 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 far of a drive for you. Um, I remember, I just remember as a kid the like Matt Hoffman skate park or whatever. That was like a big. Is that thing still open? Yeah, that one actually is open, and they added a new part that's more considered a street you know yeah. everything there is kind of big right exactly so they added a, another part that's a little bit smaller for street skaters it's pretty cool um they do a skate church it's uh i want to say it's like ev once every weekend or something like that and it fills up with kids and that's cool i mean they're having a blast 
No, that that's awesome, man. Um, did you ever have a chance to make your way to the old Norman skate park, like the metal one? That's the shitty skate park I grew up skating as a no, kid. No, but I've heard the stories, <laughs> and, and I heard what they did to it and left, like, bits and pieces of it still there. And Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of disgraceful. Yeah, yeah, I've heard that, too. Yeah, that thing is – so, as everybody knows, or if you don't know, now you know, um, Oklahoma gets extremely hot in the summertime, like triple digits. Oh, um, yeah. Very, very hot. And so you can imagine the problems that happen when you have an all metal skate park. Like you eat it. Not only are you mm -hmm. eating it, like you might catch a little burn or two on the way down. And like, I don't know, there was always like this thing. I don't know if it was like a Paul Bunyan kind of half truth, like, like local legend type of thing. But there, there was always this kind of local legend. Who knows if it's true or not. But like that, that one day there was a kid skating there on a hot summer day and he was skating the mini ramp and knocked himself out and woke up with third degree burns because everything was mad. Like, I don't know. It sounds like bullshit. Like, I don't know. My bullshit meter kind of like goes off a little bit, but I don't know. I always heard that growing up. Who knows? Dude, it hurts. I mean, it, you've been five years gone, right? Think about midsummer. It's like 119 degrees. You pop an egg on the concrete, dude. It's fried before you can even blink. It's it's a different kind of heat. It Remember, it's humid. One hundred percent. Oh, yeah. Like, so no I, bueno. I grew up, you know, doing summer workouts and football practices. Man, I, I I like to say I put in my time in in the bad weather. You know what I mean? I yeah. I some of some some of the people out here in California don't I feel like fully appreciate the good weather, but I I never take it for granted, man. I said I put in I put in my time. Um, but man, you mentioned some of your favorite skate parks in Oklahoma, man. What are some of the worst ones you come across? That the one and more was pretty hard to skate. Yeah, I remember that video. I watched that, that video. It it had like this weird uh, kink rail to flat bar, like that was four feet off the ground, attached to a slant. I don't know. It a lot of it didn't make any sense. It yeah. didn't have a, a natural flow, but then it had a really good mini ramp. So we just make the best of it. Oh, we yeah. try to go out and find the the unskated places or the uh, the places that people talk the most trash on and film there. Yeah, no, that's a cool. I, I, I love the concept. And it, it goes to show of like, because you click on a headline of like, oh, worst skate park ever. And you think it has like kind of like a negative connotation. But then you watch the mm -hmm. video and, and like, you know, nine times out of 10, it turns out to be like a positive video. Like, oh, you know, we found this thing that we like about it. Or, you know, and, and you kind of, it's not so much like just beating it into the ground, which is refreshing. You know what I mean? There's nobody, you know, negativity. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. I, that's at least that's what I take out of it too. But, um, and even, I don't know, there's something about, because like I said, out here in the Bay Area, really fortunate. We have some of the best skate parks in the, in like, in, in the world pretty much like almost every youtube video i watch like it's crazy i'll be watching it for a minute and then i'll be like oh that's sunnyville skate park or that's fremont skate park i know exactly where that's at and it's cool to have it oh, like, oh yeah yeah and it's like it's so amazing having just these resources at your disposal but i i gotta say maybe it's just me i'm not gonna speak for everybody i'm, I'm still really green around the ears but uh i even when you're at these big, fantastic skate parks, right, and there's every option in the world, you really find yourself kind of focusing on one little corner of it or, like, one little obstacle. I mean, it's not like you're going to necessarily work on all aspects of skating in one day. Like, No, I mean, it's cool to have the options. And, like, my favorite thing about uh, the big Fremont skate park, like where a lot of the Braille videos are filmed and stuff, um, that thing is so big that, like, even when it's, like, there's a lot of people there, you can always find a like a corner of it that's not crowded just out of pure size. But uh but yeah, like I said, even when you're at a ginormous perfect skate park, like you'll end up find yourself skating the simple manual pad or the skinny the simple mini ramp, you know, for the majority of the time anyway, or like a ledge. Like if there's if there's a few basic things checked off the the list, you know, you can have a good time skating for sure. Yep. That's uh kind of what I did with the channel with being new and uh, I don't know, trying to be different. I wanted to be old, but not only did I want to be old, I wanted to be old and good. So you have to like learn fast and be okay with busting your ass a whole bunch, right? So I just did that every day and I thought daily skate undertake would be the best way to describe undertaking something new every day, forcing myself into some new challenge every day. 
make a video out of it, make it, make it worth watching if I can. I, I hope it's worth watching, but. Oh yeah. Um, and then, you know, move on to the next one. I don't want to have one day go by where I'm not trying to progress. I, I, I do work like 10 to 12 hours commercial plumbing, and then I probably spend four to five hours out here in my garage with my mini ramp or ledges and stuff, still trying to progress at night. I, I get that kind of eccentric with it. Man, hats off to you, brother. What a, what a, what a work <laughs> ethic, man, for real. Um, I saw that in your videos. I saw that you built um, your own mini ramp in your garage. Um, well, let me ask you this, because I know my answer. Um, before you started skating, were you like kind of a hands-on build it, like, you know, handyman type of guy, or did you kind of learn that through skating? Well, I'm a, I'm a commercial plumber yeah. and I, I build, right? So oh, okay. everything is, is kind of relative. I, I found free plans and we went and bought like 700 bucks worth of lumber and just went to town. Okay. I found like, I think it's called DIY half pipes and more or something like that. It's completely free and online and uh, the plans worked out good. I did a two and a half foot mini with a little two and a half foot hip addition I've got a ledge, a, a six foot slant. Uh, I'm too old to know how to, let me see. There you go. Oh, okay. Oh, damn, the setup's right there, yeah. man. That's That's gotta be so fun, man. I'm, especially in a place like Oklahoma, because like, honestly, one of my next questions I had for you was like, the weather is so insane there. There's gotta be like a, not, a lot of non, like, skatable days weather wise but i guess when you have a mini ramp in your in your garage man every every day is a skatable day that's that's got that's perfect man i'm yeah that's that's amazing especially i mean that's amazing no matter where possible. you're at but in a state like oklahoma man that's just that's so clutch uh do, do, do you does your friends or does your kids friends always want to come over and skate it and stuff they they do but me being a responsible worry wart i'd I don't let too many of them unless they have permission and wear yeah. helmets and all that. Oh yeah. Stuff. Yeah. You ain't trying to, and, uh, ain't trying to have we're, we're, we're the fun house on the block though. You know, people do want to come over and watch and have fun. But like I said, I'm the one that says no all the time. Hey man, you, you're the man of the house. Somebody's got to say no. I guess it's gotta be you. Right. You know, but you know, that's, uh, that's smart though. That's, that's cool though. That's cool. Just like, you never know, like, uh, even just growing up, around seeing skateboarding that like normalizes it to people like maybe if that guy yeah. grows up that little kid grows up and maybe he doesn't even skate but he owns a business and he's not he maybe doesn't call the cops on the kids trying to skate by the or, you know what i mean just introducing yeah. it to people normalize i think that's a really cool thing probably for the neighborhood um man what's it what's it like uh watching your watching your son progress and kind of helping him progress um what what's that journey like i, I love it it's it's awesome it's opened so many new doors with me and him uh i like the fact that basically we have we had like trust like father-son trust of course every, every relationship has that but you have a, a different kind of like you really got each other's back because i didn't have someone helping me he can't reach out and catch a hundred yeah <laughs> uh i've ate it so many times like trying to learn tricks busting my sockets and stuff trying to keep up with these kids and uh, with him, I can catch him. He can run up for a blunt fakie or something, <laughs> and I can hold his waist. He can he can get to uh, get familiar with certain tricks. So I get to help him progress in a certain way that maybe other kids don't have a chance to. Yeah, yeah, no, that's so cool. And just like that journey of uh, you're kind of blazing the trail, and then he's kind of walking in the path that you follow. Man, that's that's really cool. And just anything like. I remember being a little kid, like anytime you and your dad can like do the same thing together. Like, I mean, that's just a win automatically, man. No, but that's, that's awesome. Um, just watching, watching young kids skate always blows my mind. Like, especially out here, like yeah. in Cali, or like, even I spend a lot of time up in Lake Tahoe and they have a nice little park out there when in the summertime when it's not filled with snow, but uh, what, like the kids, just the kids at these parks, like sometimes, I just got to step back and watch, man. Like, some of these kids are so good. Just Pussy to shame, huh? Oh, man. Oh, man. There's this kid. I even follow him on Instagram. I forget his exact name, but I watch his clips all the time. And uh, he – all like, all the stuff, because he's from, like, the, my same area in the Bay Area. So, he, he, all his clips are from, I, like, the skate park, same skate parks I go to. And it's, like, 
all the stuff I'm terrified to skate is like all this kid's clips are. And I mean, he has to be like eight years old, nine years old. Uh, yeah, I know. He's, he's so good. Uh, how, how old is your son right now? Yeah, they now? start so young. Oh, he's nine. He really wants to do bigger stuff, and we're trying to ease our way into it. He, he's going to be a vert kid. He, he's having trouble with, like, his flip tricks. You know how it sucks every time. Oh, like, yeah. you, you just have to learn how to flick it the right way, and then it opens up a whole new world, right? He's in that weird process. Well, and even when, so, when uh, you're that size, like, the ratio is different. It's almost like teaching a kid to shoot a basketball. Like, they can't use as much wrist. And they have, I don't know, they, yeah. they like, he has to use more, like, leg than ankle, you know what I mean? Just because of just pure, like, proportion and size and, you know, all that stuff. Like, the ratio is so different. Like, that's what's another thing, watching these kids skate. And it's like the board is almost as tall as them, and their stance is so wide, just trying to keep their feet over the bolts. And it's just, it's, it's so funny. But it's, it's awesome, though, because they, they make it work. Like, you think that yeah. they would have to, like, sacrifice, but – they don't. They just tweak the tricks, and I swear they make it work. I, I love watching the kids just – yeah, they blow my mind. And they're so fearless, right? Because it's like – it's almost like a fighter that's never been knocked out. They just don't really know what it feels like to, like, really yep. be injured. Or, so it's like, why why be scared? It's like, I don't, there's, like, consequences aren't real until you experience them for the most part. So it's just like, yeah, it's, but that's what, that's, that's what makes it so great about the kids, man. Um but yeah, um, how um, what was your like initial thing that like that inspired you? Like, you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and make this YouTube channel. Like, what was that kind of the final push, or maybe the spark that lit the fire? Um, kind of hard to put into perfect words because it's a kind of a touchy subject for me. I don't like talking about the uh, the stuff that bothers me too much to a lot of people so well, it's, a lot of people don't even know no you're fine it, I'm, it's not like a, a poking and prodding type question uh, the way that I choose to answer it is I don't, I don't have my baby boy with me anymore our youngest son okay and uh, he can't he can't see me I guess but maybe uh, if I record myself he can be proud of me or I can make him proud of me somehow I don't know it just I, I skate for him because he can't do it. He, he don't, he doesn't have the choices anymore. Yeah, no, that's, that's real, man. And, and that's why, um, man, like, like, like when people like leave comments or whatever, I, I, you know, maybe the word haters a little generic, but like people, <laughs> people don't really know why people do the things they do. Like, you know what I mean? Somebody. So I, like, I don't know, like, I, I that, that's thanks for sharing that because like I said you never know something as simple as having a skateboard YouTube channel can have a, um, a very much deeper meaning and um I mean hell I mean I, yeah I mean even just like me having these podcasts I mean if I had to say that like it it hasn't helped me with like the whole COVID isolation thing I mean it's helped me it's helped yeah. me so much so I mean yeah just something as simple as having a YouTube channel can can you know help with something much deeper for real i that's like i said thanks for sharing that um what's no no problem yeah man what's um what's been kind of like your key to success as far as building up your channel i mean i obviously I, i'll be real i uh, i'm a little jealous seo man. <laughs> seo man seo um and and if you can't tell like it's it's content driven so i'm not a professional by any means but i'm starting to get that i mean if if you're SEO keywords are spot on. If you have uh, good watchable content that's spot on with the SEO, then people will go to it. Like my park tours, they get great views, but like just clowning around or landing my first backside flip that gets like 60 views or something like that, you know, and it, that part doesn't even blow my mind. It's because I'm making personal videos, just like I showed you about the personal music. I, I make this silly stuff and it's just for me and then like and then people watch it and you're like people kind of give a shit that's kind of cool yeah and it, it makes you want to do more yeah man for sure man i swear this, this actually isn't even something that i planned on talking to you about but it's something that i've been like struggling with as like a youtuber and a podcaster it's like walking that fine balance between 
staying true to yourself, making the content you want to make, but you also want to like cater to what people want to watch. Like it is like a fine balance between like, because if I just gave people like essentially exactly what they wanted, A, there wouldn't be much difference between me and the next guy trying to kiss their ass and, and give, give them exactly what they wanted. But also, but also I don't want to be like stubborn and be like, oh, my opinion matters more than the consumer. But there's certain things I stick to my guns on. I don't know. Do you find yourself kind of yeah. having that, that battle between like, like kind of things you want to make and then versus the things you think people want to watch? Yeah. Um, when you touched on the, the views on some of those videos, they are great. And at first when I got a better reaction, the, I thought maybe I should just get rid of the other videos, right? You're like, okay, well, these are crap. Obviously maybe I should just get rid of them. And then I had to remember, I'm not, I'm not really doing it for that purpose. So I'm, I got to keep those. What if I want to go back and look at, I mean, that's, it's for me to have, right? So it's there and I'm going to keep posting them. And if, if people don't like it, they can unsub me or they don't have to see it, but I'm trying to also uh, make some kind of distant relationship or bond with someone. Um, maybe even find someone that skates in the area. Like one guy wants me to go visit his town and when we have some nice weather, I'm going to make it out to Grove, Oklahoma, and I'm going to skate their uh, little shitty park with them. Hell yeah. No, that's awesome, right? Like, that's my um, – because that's what lured me into podcasting to begin with, right? Like, the kind of community that maybe you find in a YouTube comment section or just like, oh, there's other people that find this weird shit funny too. Like, I'm not a loner. Or whatever the case may be, that they, they like watching – yeah, people – that sense of community, because I also have the, this little banner over here, over my right shoulder, um, is Beefy Boys Breakdown. And, like, I have a um, – it's like an MMA-based podcast, and it's separate from this one. Um, and But okay. I – like I said, my main thing is, like, there's a group of people out there that the day after the fights, they want to talk about fights, and they want to listen about the fights they watch. And it's like, if there's just a couple people out there that, like, you know – feel like talking about fights the day after the fights, then that's really exactly the, why I do it for. So yeah, finding that, yeah. finding that community, man, that's, that's, I think what a lot of our goals is more than it is like necessarily fame or whatever, just like, yeah, like finding a few people with common interest and, and maybe forming a little community. I think that's awesome, man. Um, especially in a place like Oklahoma where, the state community, it exists, but it probably is more spread out just because of the nature of the state. Yeah, you're either, if you're it, where I'm at, you're probably like a, a younger teen as far as skateboarding. And uh, as far as my age are the guys that have been skating for like 20 years and they don't, they have, they don't want to fucking even know about me. <laughs> so I can't hang out with any of the cool people up here. But most of the time, whenever I'm out at the skate park and I meet that uh, kid that comes up and talks to me or the one that actually uh, seeks out help or something, it, it's more personable. So, like, you can hang out with a bunch of dudes that don't really give a crap and they're just skating for themselves. Or you can skate and have fun and, in my case, be with my son and also help the other local kids. Yeah. Oh, man, I had a, such a cool experience. This, this summer I was at Lake Tahoe. And, like, um, you know, there was a bunch of kids skating. I mean, it was a skate park. There was always going to be a bunch of kids skating. They were probably about middle school age. And um, they were just amazing little kids. Like, they were awesome. They were shredded. They were hilarious. And, like, I ended up going to the store and, like, buying, like, a bunch of, like, Arizona tees for, like, the whole park and shit. Just because, like, nice, they, yeah, man. no, like, that, uh, seeing those kids just be kids. First off, seeing kids be kids. Because, like, especially out here in San Jose, you see, you don't see enough of that, man. Like either kids is getting too pressured by the schoolwork or just, I don't know, it, it, it's different. Like, you don't see a lot of that old school kids being kids it, like until you go to like the skate park and it's so refreshing to see. It's like, I just, I like yeah. to, I like to encourage that behavior. You know what I mean? Uh, but a hundred percent, man, because they could easily be on a game or a phone or doing some bad kid shit. Yeah. Yeah, a hundred percent, exactly. And you see so much of that out here. It's like out here, I feel like on the West Coast because I didn't grow up out here. I moved out here once I was already grown. But I see my little cousins and, stuff, and just kids grow up different out here. It's like one extreme or the other. It's like, oh, you have to like win a Nobel Peace Prize for science and cure cancer and go to Stanford, 
or it's like the opposite where it's just like, oh, you, all you do is just like gang banging graffiti. You know what I mean? I feel like there's not, <laughs> there's not a ton of middle ground of just like, yeah, there's this kids hanging at the skate park, being kids, whatever, you know, joking around. I, I feel you. I feel like that's important. And, uh, and even like, and you'll probably relate to this as, as a grown man that's gotten into it. I know I do, man. I mean, hell, it kind of makes you feel like a kid again sometimes, right? Like, I mean, when you when you get that right, when you're having a good time. and Always. Oh, yeah. It's great. Always. I can't beat it. Uh, uh, I don't I don't have a lot of joys in life, man. And whenever I found this, and, and it's not just something that you can even do kind of half-assed, it, it, it's all or nothing and it forces you to have fun i could be having the worst day possible and i could come home and i've got like a whole mini park and i just i'm in i'm in my fantasy for four or five hours and then i gotta sleep and yeah. fucking do all the bad stuff again but i get to go home and skate again <laughs> yeah no that's beautiful it's like i always I, I like to say it like forced me to meditate because i um mm -hmm. i'm a pretty like ADHD kind of guy, like easily distracted, whatever. And so like traditional meditation of just sitting in a quiet room and trying to force all the thoughts out of my head, like that never jived for me. I never got past more 30 seconds into that process before my distracted ass, you know, wandered off into something else. But like when I'm skating, it kind of like quasi forces me to force everything out of my head because you're so focused on not eating yeah. shit that like you're not thinking about like life stresses or things that's going bad or bills that's due like you have no room for that zero there's no room for that in there you have to you have to keep telling yourself this is what i'm doing and and even though you're fighting that part in, in the back of your mind it's like you're gonna eat shit no matter what you have to keep telling yourself that you're gonna do it otherwise you won't do it if you let anything in for a little bit don't you eat shit automatically i know i do Oh, man, I've had it happen, like, instant karma. Like, not even karma, but just, yeah, like, especially, like, if like when it happens to me, when if I'm, like, carving through the bowl, and, like, I'm just really feeling myself. I got a ton of speed. I'm carving through a bowl. You know, I'm feeling it. And, like, maybe I'm really paying too much. What happens to me, I like to stay with these headphones in, and I'll get, like, too into the song or just distracted enough, just whatever the case may be, my mind kind of, drifts for a split second and it'll just be wheel bite or just something and just mm -hmm. eat major shit for sure trucks but, clipping yeah you got trucks it. clipping it forces you to stay in the moment and it forces you to kind of, it literally like forces the shit out of your mind it's it's like i said it was like an unintended consequence for me like that's not necessarily why i got into it but I, it was like a pleasant surprise like oh while i'm skating i'm not thinking about shit else this is great this is wonderful and i, mm -hmm. I think i think that's what, what's kept me in it more than anything physical about it man how's the how's the body holding up as as a you know an over 30 skater man how's how's the body holding up it's it's good it's good i uh I've taken quite care, quite good care of it. I just, I'm starting to feel it in like the joints. And I know that's my, my part of not probably keeping up with nutrients or taking my glucosamine and whatnot. <laughs> I, I used to be a, a pretty good, pretty fit guy. I wouldn't say bodybuilder, but I got up to like 220 pounds and I knew how to, to put on muscle and take care of my body. And then I just stopped it it became too much and it wasn't, it didn't give me enough back like uh, like something like skateboarding does. And so I just fell off with it. Yeah, no, I've, I've, I've definitely experienced that. Like I said, especially coming from a football background, it's like, so it's like coming from a football background, you think fitness would kind of just like kind of come naturally, but it's like the whole reason you're working out is for football and every exercise that you've ever learned is geared towards being a better football player. So when you take away the football yeah. game, it just feels super existential. Like I remember being like a 24 hour fitness. Like I feel like a fucking hamster on a wheel. Like I literally just like, I'm just going through these motions for like, why? Like, I guess, cause I think I'm supposed to, like, I don't know. And, and yeah, skating is like this, the most organic type of workout. Like, especially, mm -hmm. I, especially I've noticed bowl skating, like pumping and carving and transition, man, especially it's a, a little bit warm outside, man, you'll be, covered in sweat before you know it be sucking wind and it's like damn like that's essentially the equivalent of like running sprints yeah you don't have a choice man 
if you're skating, if you're actually skating, then you are working out harder than you could in a gym. Yeah. I mean, you're not going to get the same kind of like strength training. I'm not trying to, to, to equate it to that. But if you're talking cardio, man, you probably get more of a workout pumping a bowl, a mini ramp, or just doing line after line after line than you would in a gym. At least I know I do. Oh, yeah. When I went to a gym, I, if I started sweating or if I started doing HIIT training or cardio, I wanted to stop, right? I wanted it to be over with, but, but you don't want skating to be yeah. over. Yeah. Yeah. A hundred percent, man. And it's like, it's like, and the core, the core engagement is underrated, man. Like the, your core is engaged essentially the whole time you're skating. And then like, I'm like right now, my main thing the past couple of days I've been trying to get better at, I really just learn at all. I'm horrible at it. It's just manuals. And I've learned mm -hmm. like, I mean, to do a good manual, like your your core is essentially like engaged, like you're essentially doing a crunch or like an oblique, like like I, like literally my obliques yep. kind of felt it. Like the first, I just like spent like a couple hours trying to get better at manually, and then like my obliques, like because it's like your core is engaged. Yeah, no, a hundred percent, bro. Um, I mm -hmm. I gotta ask you something uh, that I personally What's experienced. Up? Um, do you get like do you feel camera pressure? Like I could do a trick when with no when I'm not being filmed and it feels so comfortable and steezy and like and then like the minute I turn the camera on I just I feel like I like kind of turtle up. You ever you ever feel that the camera pressure? I I I always have that camera pressure because I'm I am like a thousand people in my head putting me down twenty four seven so. What what puts me in a bad mood is going for something and you know that it's just a process of trying to land it over and over again and knowing that you have a chance of getting hurt and that you may not land that today. And that bothers me. It really bothers me whenever you have to leave and you can't land your trip. Uh, that's the worst, bro. Especially because I come from like a traditional sports kind of background. It's like whether it be basketball, football, like you never want to end on something bad. Like basketball players are notorious for like, I won't leave the gym until I've made three in a row or whatever. You leave on a high note. And, and, and I try to do the same with my skating. Like I, even if it's just like a clean ass all or just something simple, I, I don't want to leave on a bad note. Um, yeah. And yeah, but, but, but yeah, trying and not, and having to leave the spot or leave the skate park or whatever the case may be without mm -hmm. accomplishing said goal is just the ultimate blue ball feeling, man. It is the worst. Yeah, yeah. It's awesome. I mean, it's not awesome at all. Um, but yeah. Um, so yeah, I was talking about you, you built your own uh, mini ramp, and, but you kind of have a, like a background in building. And I, um, so I'm the exact opposite, bro. Like I, um, you know, I, I was raised by a single mom. Like I did, I came up playing, spending all my time playing football and stuff. Like I never built a thing in my damn life. I never, like, I, I'm not the most hands-on kind of guy, crafty guy. Oh, you and, definitely and, could do this, bro. Oh, but, but that's what I'm saying. Skating, almost like it forced me to meditate. It forced me to learn that shit too. Cause I, I mean, it's not, it's not as complex, obviously, as a mini ramp, but I built my own little grind box. And it's like I never would have, uh, I never would have even learned those skills. Like I learned how to like countersink metal before you screw it in, and like I just like it like forced me to learn these like other skills. And it's like, hmm, I never would have thought like the process of skating and learning how to skate would like teach me how to build shit. It was like an unintended consequence. And I feel like I can't be the only guy like that out there. No, I mean I I don't enjoy my job. I just get paid really well to do it this if i did this for a living like that one dude does on a youtube i can't think of his the name john the hill keen ramp guy oh the keen ramp. no the, the keen yeah, ramp guy yeah he's dope man he's got the job yeah yeah he does i would love doing that and i love i love how they kind of give back or like they teach how to make the free shit or whatever that's literally the yeah. the model i i use my, for my grind box when they're like that whole build a grind box for free keen ramps video that's the exact video i use so yeah no those guys are dope like, just as good yeah 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 for sure those guys are dope it's like they they make a product but they teach you how to make it yourself for free and i gotta say it it they say it's for free, but I mean that's some hard fucking work. But if you're willing to put in that work, you can make yourself yeah. something skate. And it was a beautiful feeling. And I get that extra little bit of gratification when I skate it 
compared to skating at a skate park or whatever. It's like, yeah, I built that. Like, I don't know. It's a weird, like, I don't know, primal, or just basic feeling. Like, I don't know. I'm sure you like skating your mini ramp better than other people's oh, yeah. mini ramp. It's, I mean, it's four foot wide. It's, it's really just for practice, dude, but I love it. And I've got to where I can skate this. I've only got like maybe four and a half, maybe five feet of flat and I can still fly on this thing. I, I love the stuff that I build and it helped me learn to be the skater that I am right now. And hopefully an even better one, you know, a month from now with it. Yeah. Hell yeah, man. Um, what, what do you like to skate the most? Like if you like top three favorite, like obstacles or just things like to skate, like, you know, if you had to, I guess like if you're on the Island, you only have like three little obstacles to skate. Like what, what are your top three? Like what, what do you like to skate the most? Man, I don't know. I can't pick. <laughs> I can't. Oh, wow. I can't pick with a fair bias, man. Um, the the most favorite thing right now is I really want to get better at handrails. The last video I focused on grinding an entire, not grinding, but board sliding an entire handrail uh, kink and all, and that's it's made me want to start making a, a next video at hopefully Norman and I want to get like 20 foot grinds at least uh. 50 50s and whatnot I want to I want to really push for something hard because if you haven't noticed I don't do a whole lot of grind tricks on rails I'm I'm not the best <laughs> I'm not the best grinder <laughs> so I literally I'm very very just now learning my very beginner grinds like little small curb and like or small ledge and curb 50 50s and slappy no slides and shit like that so i'm just now starting to learn my first grinds and it's like what people don't understand that either don't skate themselves or haven't learned to grind yet like even if you you slide two inches it feels like you slid two yards man like like it just the translate like when those guys really grind long shit is just mind-blowing because like i say you'll if you're actually on the board yourself, you slide like one foot or six inches. It just, it feels so much. It feels like you're grinding forever. And then you watch the clip back and it's just like a kiss. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so yeah, man, kudos to you. That's a, that's a, I did like a, a, I think a 15 foot board slide. And then I was so hyped up. I was like, I want to know what the longest board slide is. And I got immediately depressed because it was like 200 feet. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, I've seen some crazy videos. And, like, the guys, like, they have their homies, like, running ahead of them with wax and shit yeah, like that. Yeah, crazy. And super crazy. Yeah, for sure, man. I feel, like, I feel like after, like, when you're on a rail for that long, do you feel like the fucking Tony Hawk meter? That, like, you just have to, like, keep your balance? Like, it's It's all about the initial contact. That's, at least for me, it is. And... If the if the moment you make contact, it you can tell if you should probably kick out. And thankfully, I am being a wuss and I and I'm learning most of this stuff at a skate park because if I was on a normal handrail, man, my cojones would be gone. Well, that's the biggest difference, right, between like uh, skate park rails and and actual street like out in the wild handrails is like the mm -hmm. the the height of them and uh, just. The, the shit at the skate park's meant to be skated, you know what I mean? And yeah, out, yeah, out there in the wild, you're usually dealing with steeper slopes and higher rails, and those guys, yeah, that always, that always just blew my mind how guys just fucking send it down shit like that. Do you, um... Yeah, big stuff, too, with that Andy Anderson. That kid's pretty crazy. Now, a lot of people don't like him for whatever reason, insert reason, dude, but the dude can grind, and he can skate. Oh, I man. can't talk no trash on him. Oh, yeah, he has the most unique style, which is so dope. It's like, honestly, like, I could watch if they blurred everything out and it was just like an outline. If I was just like watching the line or like watching how he was skating, I'd still be able to tell it was Andy Anderson, even if I couldn't see it was Andy Anderson. You know what I mean? If it was just like a, yeah, and uh, just he has such a unique style, which like I said, I think is just invaluable like it's just if you can oh yeah yeah you know what i mean especially in the skateboarding world like if you can do the same trick as somebody else but yours looks way different i mean you're a one of one and then he definitely falls into that category and uh well, have you seen how they put him down the worst thing that i've seen is they have like they've normalized the fact that he 
uh, what is it, the uh, front foot impossibles out of like grinds and stuff where he's like, oh yeah, Andy Anderson, just front foot impossible out of every grind. It's like, yeah, I mean, that's still impressive. Who cares if he does it a hundred times? Yeah, man. Can you do it? Yeah, can, exactly. The, the hate on him is ridiculous. And I think a lot of the hate starts because he likes to wear a helmet. And it's like, hey, his helmet's okay. His helmet's dope, and it's like it's his body. Like I, I've never been the type to like look at the next man, like worry, concern myself with the next man. Like you're supposed to be worried about the kind of yourself and what you're doing and what's gonna improve you. So yeah, just people that give a fuck what that man puts on his head just blows my mind. That whole gatekeeper kind of culture. Yep. I think I, I, there's a million pluses to skating and skate culture, and there's uh, so many things to like about it. But one of the kind of darker sides, things that I don't like as much, is that kind of gatekeeper, kind of tribalistic, like, oh, I'm this kind of skater, and you're that kind of skater, and this kind of skating yep. – is better than X type of skating. And, and that shit, granted, there's not as much of it as people make it out to be. Like, cause it's like, it's one of those things you see it in YouTube comment sections, but when you go to the skate park, I feel like I never really experienced it. Like when I go to the skate park, everybody's just skating and taking turns and shooting the shit. But, but yeah, like online, there's like this like divisiveness that I don't know if, Yep. exists in the real of the life. keyboard man uh -huh, yeah they're not there a hundred percent a hundred percent and they see someone out having fun or they see someone out doing something and they have to take their happiness or their positivity and turn it into something negative because that's how they feel on the inside and if you can look past it then you'll start to see you kind of start to see people for who they are but then you start to really appreciate the real people though yeah, 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 a hundred percent. And and like I said, I think it's more perception than reality because most of the skaters I've actually encountered have been really cool and helpful. And like I said, may yeah. maybe that has to do with where I'm at. Like the Bay Area is kind of known for like chill vibes, but I don't know. There are the certain type of skaters that like try to embrace that kind of like. And it is cool. It has always been a part of skating, but that kind of like grungy kind of like kind of outlaw type of skater kind of vibe. And I said, that's cool. And, and there's always a place for it, but I, I don't know. Like it, it I don't know. I, I, I do like how skating is kind of turning in this more of kind of like helpful accepting direction, if that makes sense. You know what I'm saying? Like a largely due to a lot of the YouTube stuff, but it seems like, because, cause, I mean, nobody really benefits from trying to, like, have, like, an elitist gatekeeper mentality. Like, and, and, and the, in reality, the more people skating, the better it is for skating everywhere. True. The more exposure for skate in a positive way is the best thing possible, right? So whether it's a three-year-old doing a drop-in for the first time or it's Andy Anderson's one-foot impossible or front-foot impossible, I mean, either way, it's – it's exposure to positivity and skate, not like the negative signs that you see everywhere or the kind of picture they paint in uh, in media or like in movies and stuff where you have to be a bad gangster or <laughs> bad kid or something. Yeah, because right, think about how many dope athletic kids probably had an interest in skating, but their parents were like, oh, hell no, we don't want you like hanging out with sketchy kids or leading down a wrong path. And it's like, the parents, like, exactly. it's like, I don't know. It's like they, they, all they want is for the best. But now, I don't know. It's kind of like what some people call going mainstream. Others call, like, not having a negative connotation and, like, being approachable for people to, you know, have access to. And, and I just, I think, I don't think it's a bad thing. I really don't. Because um, like, even just speaking from my own point of view, so, like, I said, I'm 26 years old. I'm originally from Oklahoma. And I'm like, I mean, I'm 5'10", 230 pounds. Like, I'm a like former football player. Like I'm not I, – I don't look like a necessarily most people that are riding around on a skateboard. And uh, – but just – like I said, I've, I've, I've really personally – only speaking for what I've, I've experienced, I've experienced nothing but really just kind of open arms and, like, people have been willing to give me pointers and, and everybody's been really chill about it. So it, 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 oh, yeah. it made me feel comfortable quick for sure. Um, yeah, the – the real community, right? The real one, because the online one needs work. But when you're out there in real life, yeah. that's where it's at.
And, and, and if you spend too much time online, it's going to take the positivity out of it anyway. You're better off skating. No, you're that man. That's real talk right there, man. Yeah, one thing I love so much about being out here in the Bay Area is like it's literally ingrained in the culture. Like, and what I mean by that, I, I, I shit you not. This should be like a commercial for skateboarding or something. But it's just something I observed one day at the skate park out here. I think it was at the Sunnyvale Skate Park, and um, they there was a there was three generations simultaneously skating together. There was the grandpa who was probably around fifty years, not super old. And then there was like the um, the son who was about my age, about your age, something you know, in in the ballpark, you know, late twenties, early thirties, whatever. And then there's um, and then there was like the young little like like probably five six year old daughter just learning, and they were all say skating as like a That's family. Awesome. It was a fucking beautiful moment. I was like, this is like a commercial. This is like something I don't know, but it's just it's so ingrained in California culture. You know, it just it goes hand in hand like. Like, growing up in Oklahoma, like, football is ingrained in the culture. Like, it's ingrained. It goes hand-in-hand with politics and religion. And, I mean, football is ingrained in Oklahoma's culture, which, like I said, I have no problem with I played football my whole life. But that's how skating is out here. Like, skating is, like, part of the culture. Like, most parks have skate parks. And it's not, like, I don't know, it's super normalized, which which is pretty cool. Yeah. And and to touch back what you said, how – three generations were skating and you can pair them and their happiness to let's say the gatekeep the gatekeeping uh, skaters that are out there with their happiness right they're the outcast oh, yeah. and, and that's what brings them happiness but it shows you the one constant is happiness it's not that they're the outcast and it's not that the other people are with their family it's the fact that it brings anyone that does it happiness you can't beat it dude yeah yeah no for sure man and like i said this the, the the feeling doesn't change, right? Like when you're a very, very beginner and you land your first ollie versus like whenever you're a more advanced skater and you learn a more advanced trick, that feeling is like essentially the same. It just, it doesn't, like, like with drugs or whatever, you're always chasing that first initial high. But like yeah. with, with skating, you can keep achieving that high. It's like you can keep unlocking new levels of the video game or something. I don't know. It's, it's, it's infinite. Yep, but you got to you got to up your dose. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Go more extreme. For Every sure. time. Yeah, mm-hmm. go more extreme. Um, do you have like um a favorite skate YouTube channel that kind of just like you like to watch in your free time, or that like really kind of inspires you? Man, I I liked watching uh the Braille channel with my kid because he's younger and they're they're not so harsh. Yeah. With uh, some of the way they way that they present their content or whatnot no that's fair and uh after a while i got to realize that it's it's not bad they're they're a business right yeah they lean more towards the uh you need us you got to buy from us yeah. we have everything you need we're yeah. gonna be the answer and that's not what it's all about but i can't bash them because it's a business and yeah they're doing it good obviously yeah. but with my channel and with the skate channels that I watch, I want to just watch skating progression and people just doing it because that's what they want to do. Yeah. Yeah, for sure, man. I, um, I had a struggle with myself too. Cause like I, at first I was like telling myself, I like had to kind of like learn the tricks and like the Braille order. And then I was like, man, fuck yeah. that. Like I don't, I don't got to do that in that order. Like I can learn tricks in whatever order I want and kind of, Oh yeah. And like kind of, I don't know. Cause just the idea that there's any like really order to do it. There's really not. Cause it, and then even people no. that claim to know the order, like, I don't know, like, 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 I don't know, just for example, like you take like a lot of street skaters that like pretend they know everything and throw them in like a deep gnarly bowl. And, and you know what I'm saying? And like the, the ground like equalizes real fast. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, man, uh, for sure. I I, I like I, I do watch a lot of Braille. I um uh, I do, but like exactly like I've never bought a single Braille project. I just I, I like their consistency. I like that they they constantly produce content. Um, uh, I do like uh I watch a the lot of creative skate games, right? That's cool. Yeah, that's some of the best ones. Like yeah, yeah the fakey only or the nolly only. That 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 shit is really cool. And um yeah, no, and then um. I like I, I like I like John Hill. I first got into John Hill kind of similar to yours. He's like this the skate park reviews and stuff like that. And um 
and, and, and I don't know. I, I like his approach to, to skateboarding. I don't know. I feel like there's a balance, though, that guys like yourself honestly seem to hit on is, like, you can – because guys like Braille and John Hill, like I said, and I, I watch their content, but they, they I feel like they kind of try to sanitize it too much. Like, just – and I'm not saying I want more, like, F-bombs or, you know, beer chugs. Like, that's not what I'm saying. But I, it, it does kind of come across ultra-filtered and ultra-sanitized. And, and, and skating traditionally kind of hasn't been that. Uh, but, but I do feel like there kind of is a happy medium. Like, exactly. You don't necessarily need to be, like, ripping bongs and, and like, shotgun and beers like you're, like, in a Thrasher video but like we also oh, yeah. we also don't gotta act like we're at church camp either. You know what I'm saying? Like I feel mm. I, I feel like there can be a happy medium, which I feel like you be... you accomplished. By the way, I guess I'm good trying to give you a long winded compliment. <laughs> well, thank you, man. I I it's not that I don't mean to do anything or or not like on purpose. I I just kind of I just try to be me because that's what the other videos are missing from my perspective is they're already professional skateboarders, right? And they're, they're giving you a really fast kind of tutorial with explanations that maybe you don't understand all the way. And then again, that they, they are the pro. So they're landing it consistently every time I want to be the channel where it shows you all the falls. It shows you the dude getting up with bleeding all over his eye and then <laughs> racing back up a six foot ramp to try to rock fake it again or something. You know, I, I, I want to try to bring the realistic side to it, but then I don't want to drown it with uh buy my stuff, buy my stuff, buy my stuff. Yeah. Yeah, man. And, and that's, and by the way, mission accomplished, because that's literally one of the things I love about Thank your you. channel. It's just that that makes it relatable and approachable because yeah, I mean, as somebody who's trying to learn, you know, a beginner skater who's trying to learn a lot of tricks and I do watch a lot of YouTube skate content. Like, nothing's more frustrating than a tutorial. It's like, oh, this is how you do a tray flip. And then they just, like, do, like, a perfect tray flip. And it's like, oh, thanks. I learned so much from watching you do a perfect tray flip. Like, like oh, all you have to do is do a tray flip to do a tray flip. Uh, thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. And it's just like, yeah. Yeah, yeah no, for sure, man. I do appreciate just uh, the realness that comes from your video. And then uh, – Thank you. Kind of one last little subject I want to hit on, then you know, I'll let you get back to you know your night and your family and all that. Um, just something about skating is so like watchable, right? Like even to non-skaters, like even before I started skating again, I swear like 15% of my Instagram feed was like skate content. Because like it just is so watchable, it's so relatable. Like you don't know how to you don't have to know how to tray flip a five stair to appreciate a video clip of a guy train flipping a five stair. It's like, I don't know. It, oh, yeah. it, it's so tra it, it's so visually appealing. It's so like translatable to even people that don't skate. Yeah, I agree with you. For me, it was uh, more of the mystery. You know that everything is possible. You know that you can do it, but how do you do it? And that's like the long, the long, dangerous road, right? You're oh, yeah. Throwing tricks and falling and trying to figure stuff out, especially if you don't have anyone to skate with. It's like a, a new door that you're opening every day of what am I going to get broke today? <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. And then, and then like, uh, just nowadays, man, especially skating's just came to this new level to where it's essentially, it's like, it's not, can you do a kickflip? It's like, can you do a nollie kick flip? Can you do fakie? Can you do a front side flip? Like, I don't know. It's just like there, there's there's so, so many variations and everything is just so commonplace nowadays that, yeah, you know, like I said, it really is infinite. It really is, you know, it, it, it's a wormhole, right? Like you, 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 yep. you take a little peek in and then, you know, next thing you know, you're just all the way, you know, committed to just balls deep as they say. But, uh, but, yep. but yeah, man. Um, Man, I really appreciate you coming on, man. I really appreciate your time. Thanks for having me. Yeah, man, and I'm a huge fan of your channel. Yeah, so um, tell everybody, like I said, where they can subscribe um, and, and everything. Just kind of give you a little send-off and let people know where they can support. Okay, well, yeah, thanks uh, for watching. And you can check me out at youtube.com slash Kyle Bryant Daily Skate. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, I, like I said, I'm a big fan of your um uh, of your content like i said especially in a state like oklahoma for anybody watching right now if you're in oklahoma and you skate it's like 
like I said, I'm in I'm in the Bay Area, so every YouTube video I turn on is a video of some guy at a park that I go to all the time, and that's cool. But living somewhere like Oklahoma, you can experience that exact same thing by watching this man's video. Like, oh man, I've skated that park. Or if you're in Oklahoma and there may be limited spots to skate, this man can turn you on to some good skate parks and tell you where to check them out. So really, it's a, it's or a, the worst, or the worst, or the worst. <laughs> yeah, exactly, man. Tell you some spots to maybe maybe pass up on your journey. But uh, either way, man, like I said I'm a big fan of your channel. I'm looking forward to what you you and your son you know bring to us in the future. I love watching you guys' journey. Uh, so thanks for being a part of episode 38 of Dreadful Talk. And yeah, um, everybody, you can like and subscribe. Um, uh, you can find me, Dreadful Talk Podcast, on YouTube. You can find him, da Daily Skate Undertake, on YouTube. And just support both of us and, and support your local, um, you know, Oklahoma boy trying to trying to make it out here because that, that's what both of us, the category we both fall under, man. So I appreciate you, yes, my sir. guy. And like I said, wishing you much success. And like I said, maybe, maybe our paths will cross again down the road one time. Maybe you can Come check out some of these skate parks out here on the West Coast one day. I'll show you around. Oh, I'll be out there. Oh, yeah, man. Yes, sir. For Thank real. you for having me again, buddy. Yeah, thanks, man. Have a good night, man. See you.